In 1985, Red Sonja went on her first, and thus far, only theatrical adventure in this action-packed sword and sorcery fantasy movie. Starring Bridget Nielsen as the title character, Red Sonja must go on a quest to seek revenge against the evil Queen Ghidran for killing her family. Where Red Sonja is granted superhuman strength and fighting abilities by a goddess. Where she will continue to have her powers as long as she doesn't do the spicy tango with a man. Unless he defeats her in combat. Hey, don't look at me like that, I didn't make up the rules. Where along the way she teams up with Lord Kalidor, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger who is in no way playing Conan the Barbarian, wink wink, nudge nudge, in this fantasy epic adventure full of magic and wonder. It also didn't do too well when it came out. So today we're going to try and find out why by looking into 10 things that you didn't know about Red Sonja. So, let's check it out. Number 10, Origins of Red Sonja. Red Sonja made her first appearance in the 1934 pulp magazine, The Magic Carpet, where she appeared in a story called The Shadow of the Vulture. She was the creation of pulp writer Robert E. Howard. Red Sonja was originally of Polish-Ukraine descent, fighting against the Ottoman Empire, with the action taking place in the 16th century and she wasn't a sword-welding warrior, but rather a gun-slinging one. She did, however, have her famous fiery red hair, hence her name, Red Sonja. The character was recreated for Marvel Comics in 1973, where she appeared in Conan the Barbarian, issue 23. She was created by Roy Thomas and illustrator Barry Windsor Smith, where she became the Red Sonja that we all know. Now, she wasn't a gunfighter of the 16th century, but a sword-fighting warrior of the Hyborian Age. Although she started off as a character in the Conan comics, in 1975, Red Sonja proved so popular she got her own comic book lineup. However, her run with Marvel came to a close in 1986, but Dynamite Comics would reintroduce the adventures of Red Sonja in 2005 in a brand new comic book lineup, which is still going on to this day. With Red Sonja proving to be very popular among comic book readers. Number 9. The movie couldn't use the character Conan. The Dino De Laurentiis Corporation had previously produced the two Conan movies which starred Arnold Schwarzenegger, those being Conan the Barbarian in 1982 and Conan the Destroyer in 1984, so it was decided to make a spin-off movie based on the movie Red Sonja. As in the comics, she is part of the Conan universe. And of course the production had a contract with Schwarzenegger, so he was brought back on board to play Conan. However, it was discovered the rights for the Conan character had expired, so the production couldn't actually use the Conan character. They could, however, use Schwarzenegger, so it was decided to make Arnie a new character. Just like Conan, only he was called Lord Kalidor. This has caused great confusion among fans over the years, as Arnie looks and acts just like Conan in Red Sonja, but he isn't Conan. This has led many fans to come up with a theory that Kalidor is Conan, and that Kalidor is just one of his travelling names. Either way, yeah, he's basically Conan. Number 8. The Casting of Red Sonja Sandal Bergman, who had previously starred as the love interest in Conan the Barbarian, was initially offered the role of Red Sonja, but she expressed more interest in playing the role of the evil queen, so she was cast in that part instead. Maniac cop actress Laureen Landon was next in line to play the title role, but producer Dino De Laurentiis discovered that she had starred in a similar movie called Hundra, and it was felt that the Hundra role was too similar to Red Sonja, so it was decided not to cast her in the part. Apparently, finding the right actress to play Red Sonja was a timely chore, which took about a year, as the production just couldn't find whom they felt was the right actress for the part. According to IMDb, even Sigourney Weaver was offered the part. It was only eight weeks till filming was to take place when Dino De Laurentiis saw Bridget Nielsen on the cover of a fashion magazine, where the 21-year-old Denmark model was swiftly flown to Rome and auditioned for the part, and got it. 
and it was good casting too. I mean, okay, her acting can be creaky at times, but you know, after all, this was her first acting gig. But all that aside, she does come across as a warrior and does look great wielding a sword. Number seven, Arnie was just meant to have a cameo. One year earlier, in 1984, Schwarzenegger struck gold with his performance as the Terminator, where he now wanted to move on to bigger movie productions. However, he agreed to return to Red Sonja as a favour to Dino De Laurentiis. His part in the movie was intended to be a glorified cameo. However, his planned one week on set turned into four weeks, and upon watching a rough cut of Red Sonja, Schwarzenegger discovered that his minor part was actually more of a co-star role, with some trickery being involved, such as using multiple cameras when he was on the set, which led him to finish his 10-year contract that he had with Dino De Laurentiis. In fact, Schwarzenegger even got top billing for Red Sonja, which may have even led to audiences to believe that it was a Schwarzenegger movie, or even a flat-out Conan movie. Heck, in some parts of the world, the movie was even retitled to Kalidor, aka his character in Red Sonja, completely taking Red Sonja away from her movie. Arnie felt that Red Sonja was the worst movie that he had starred in. However, Schwarzenegger doesn't seem to hold ill feelings now, and even jokes, saying that he used to use Red Sonja to discipline his kids, and would tell them if they didn't behave, he'll make them watch Red Sonja. I don't know if that's legitimate, or if that's just Arnie making a joke about how much he doesn't like Red Sonja. I mean, come on, it's not that bad. Number 6. Filming Conan the Barbarian was mainly shot in Spain. Conan the Destroyer was mainly shot in Mexico. And interestingly enough, Red Sonja was mainly filmed in Italy, particularly around the Grand Sasso, with the location giving the movie that ancient sword and sorcery fantasy look, as well as some movie studios in Rome also being used. Red Sonja was directed by classic movie director Richard Fleischer, son of Max Fleischer, whom one year earlier previously directed Conan the Destroyer, as well as other classics like Fantastic Voyage and Doctor Doolittle. The script was written by British television scriptwriter Clive Exton, whom was probably best known for writing the British comedy show Jeeves and Wooster. However, it seems that during filming there was problems with the script, as fellow British scriptwriter George MacDonald Fraser was brought onto the set to do script rewrites as the movie was actually being filmed. MacDonald Fraser had previously worked on the script for Superman the Movie and the James Bond film Octopussy. So seeing how we're halfway through the video, I thought I'd give you a quick tour of my video store. Yep, this is my video store, or rather a video store replica, that I made in my garage. I made it because I really miss video stores. I miss that magical feeling you would get when you would go to a video store every Friday evening. It's hard to explain to anyone who wasn't there, but it really was magical. Just the colours and the atmosphere, and seeing all the covers side by side. It would always leave me to get this excited tremble, you know, this sort of anticipation I would get when I would just look at all these covers, where I would think to myself, what new movie awaits for me this time? When I moved into my house and saw this garage, the first thing I thought to myself was, this kind of looks like it could be a video store. So, yep, I'm going to make it a video store. What you're currently looking at is two years of me adding things and decorating and trying my best to recapture the video store experience, while also adding unique relics like laser discs, there's a Muppets Betamax in there somewhere, and VHS releases of well-known movies from all over the world. And I feel like even now, I'm not finished, as there is still so much more I want to do with this. Anyway, enjoy the rest of this tour. I really hope that you enjoy this tour and my video store. <laughs> hey, that rhymed and I didn't even mean it to do so. Haha. <laughs>
Number five, comic book adaptation. Upon Red Sonja's theatrical release, Marvel Comics made a comic book adaptation tie-in. A comic based on a movie based on a comic book. Yep, we're back into those weird comic book inception situations. The comic was written by comic book writer Louise Simonson, who would go on to help create the infamous Death of Superman comic book storyline in the early 90s, as well as co-creating characters like Apocalypse, Cable, Steel, and Doomsday. The comic was only a two-part limited release, which recaptures the adventures seen in the movie, only shown in comic book panel format. And the comic looks great, it's beautifully drawn, very colourful, and full of energy, making it a must-have collector's piece for fans of the movie. I really love how the cover of the first issue recreates the movie's poster, it looks cool. Sadly though, this comic does seem to be rare, and not so easy to come by. So if you find a copy in your old boxes of comic books that you had as a kid, look after it as it may be worth something. Number 4. Red Sonja Returned for the Small Screen Despite Bridget Nielsen being the only real known live-action adaptation of Red Sonja, the character actually did briefly return for the small screen. It was for the short-lived Conan TV show called Conan the Adventurer, which ran from 1997 to 1998. Yeah, it was that weird Conan show that was trying to be like the popular Hercules and Xena TV shows of the time, but unable to reach those shows' levels of popularity. Red Sonja appeared in an episode appropriately called Red Sonja, which was broadcast in February 1998. And, well, it kind of looks like what it is. Red Sonja on a TV budget from the 90s. Red Sonja was played by model Angelica Bridges, who also starred in that bizarre Mortal Kombat TV series, as well as Baywatch and Days of Our Lives. And as awkwardly 90s as Conan the Adventurer is, it did do one thing that Red Sonja couldn't do, which was show the characters Conan and Red Sonja together. Yep, actually together without having to change Conan's name for legal issues. So, I guess there's that. However, Red Sonja's performance in the show would become largely forgotten, as the Conan show itself would be largely forgotten. Number 3. Proposed Sequels and Remakes There apparently were plans to make a Red Sonja sequel, but after its disappointing box office results, plans were scrapped. Then in 2008, there were plans for a Red Sonja remake, which was being handled by Robert Rodriguez, and was to star Rose McGowan as Red Sonja. But the following year, the remake was scrapped. Then in 2010, there was yet another plan for a remake, which was set to be filmed round about the same time as a planned sequel to the Conan Barbarian remake. However, the project got stuck in development hell. Jumped to 2015 and it was said that new writers were being brought on board to work on the Red Sonja remake script. Then in 2017, it seemed that the project was officially back on track. But once again, nothing came of it. There would be talks and whispers of the remakes going back on track in 2019 and 2021, with Ready Player One and Ant-Man and the Wasp actress, Hannah John Cameron, rumoured to be cast as Red Sonja. But to be honest, at this point, who knows what will happen, as it seems that this is a difficult production to get off the ground for some reason. However, Red Sonja would come back in animation form. Number two, there was an animated movie. It may seem difficult to get a live-action Red Sonja off the ground, however the character did finally make a comeback in an animated movie, which I never even knew about until now, where in 2016, Red Sonja Queen of Plagues came out, an animated movie produced by Shout Factory, where we see Red Sonja go on a new epic battle. The movie featured voice artist Misty Lee in the role of Red Sonja, and the project was first announced at San Diego Comic-Con in 2016, which came complete with a trailer. However, the movie got a very lukewarm reception. It's believed that one of the reasons the movie didn't catch on is because it used an animation format called Motion Comic, which basically looks like comic book panels with movement. DVD Talk would go on to say, quote, It's a damn shame that this is a motion comic, because all of the epic feel is sucked out of it, and just comes off as a cheaply made cash-in on the recent comic book popularity. Look, I don't know if the movie is any good, as I haven't seen it. Who knows, maybe it's a unique Red Sonja experience, so if you've seen it, let me know. Number 1. The movie didn't do too well. 
Red Sonja was released in July 1985 and only made $6.9 million on a budget of $17.9 million, making it a box office failure. The film didn't win over any critics either, who felt that the movie was silly, poorly made and miscast. Both Siskel and Ebert famously roasted the movie in their review, where Ebert said it has dialogue which sounds like the actors have already read the Mad Magazine parody of the film. Red Sonja would also go on to get nominated for three Golden Raspberry Awards, with Bridget Nielsen winning Worst New Star. So yeah, it seems that at the time, that people really didn't like this movie, but I feel like that it has grown in popularity over the years. To me, it's just another entry in the lineup of sword and sorcery movies that came out during the 80s. Maybe at that stage, people were just fed up with the genre. After all, in following years, both Legend and Willow underperformed and didn't get the best reviews, but both would go on to be cult classics. I think that if you're a fan of the genre, you'll enjoy this movie. It's fun and adventurous, and has some very interesting visuals. And dare I say it, I think Nielsen is pretty good in the role. She definitely does look the part. You should definitely check it out if you're a fan of the previous two Conan movies starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, as Red Sonja does kind of act as a spiritual third entry, or at least a spiritual spin-off. It may not be a movie that has everything to entertain everyone, but what it does have is still perfectly enjoyable. Yeah, I say dust off your old copies of Red Sonja and give it another watch. You may be surprised, it's not as bad as you think. It has that dark fantasy look and feel and it is lots of fun. Anyway, I'm Minty and I'm honestly surprised that Red Sonja is Arnie's personal worst movie that he has starred in. Has he not seen Junior or Batman and Robin? See ya!